Hi, my name is Tristan from Plasco and Plastics. Today we're going to be talking about the product development process and how exactly a product goes from an idea to the shelves on the retail stores. All too often we have inventors who only think about the material cost of making the product and the end selling cost and they don't take into account all the other costs down the line. Some things you may want to consider is shipping. So depending on what the product looks like, uh, it might not fit well into a container. It might not fit well into factories and therefore the shipping costs, logistic costs are going to be much, much higher. So before you design your product, think about should I make this product fold? Should I make this product collapse into different pieces or be taken apart? How are you going to produce this product so that your shipping and logistics are as streamlined as possible? These are the considerations that you should keep in mind before you even go to a design firm. Now, perhaps you're very happy with the product, you're very happy with your target audience and you think that this product is gonna sell and be profitable. Now it's time to go to a design agency to really make your idea a reality. There are lots of different design agencies out there. This part can easily cost you between five, 10 to $100,000 to get your product designed correctly. So before you go to these more expensive agencies, you might wanna consider learning basic CAD software yourself, perhaps going to a design school and getting students to do it, or using tools and online resources like Fiverr to get your very basic ideas across. At Plasco and Plastics, we often collaborate with clients, so we'll actually start new companies, new ventures, and of course, new products with our clients itself. So this often means making new products. For us, we work alongside a company called Form3 based here in Vancouver. They do amazing work in terms of design and overall ergonomic support. So these specialists are going to understand what the consumer wants and how to make things fit correctly. So how handles are going to feel, how different materials should feel, what colors may look the best for this particular product. They're going to be able to design a beautiful product for you and you should look into finding a similar design agency in your area. However, you should also reach out to a manufacturing specialist or an injection molding specialist because they are gonna be the ones to find the other flaws and the other opportunities in your product that your consumer won't see. So how is the product gonna fit in the mold? How is it gonna come out of the mold? How can you use the mold and the cavities within the mold to produce as many products at once? These are the things that your injection molding specialist will find. The next step is to actually make the product yourself. So say you're happy with all the steps so far, you will next need to look at the tooling process for the mold building. So oftentimes the injection molder can build a mold in house, but again, many times uh, they will actually have to look for a mold specialist. And the same mentality applies where an injection molding facility might understand what mold will work best with their machines and stuff. An injection mold maker is actually gonna be the specialist in terms of making the mold and making sure all the vents, all the cavities are working as they should. Mold making can be a very timely process between six weeks and six months, depending on where you're tooling the product. Um, you could be making it overseas or in North America. There's plenty of good options. Uh, if you are gonna get a mold made overseas, you're probably looking at up to five weeks of shipping time alone just to get it from another country into North America. There's also a lot of things that you might want to consider if you're making a very custom product with a very um, custom or unique mold. Some parts that you will need fabricated for the mold specifically could take long. So if a unique part takes a month or two months to make, you have to add that on to your mold building process. Another thing that can be a big time constraint is labor hours. So if it's a bigger mold, you are looking at maybe one or two months of just labor itself. There are a lot of different things to consider when you're making a mold. So you're looking at the mold design, the materials. So whether steel or aluminum would work better. Um, you're looking at the pins, the bushings, um, the hot runners. There's a lot of different key components within a mold and you have to make sure that you're using the best materials and design for your product to be its absolute best. Simple mold can cost about $25,000 um, up until maybe $150,000 for a larger mold. Tooling costs for modification can easily be about $10,000. So if you want to change your product, you'll have to change the mold, that'll be $10,000. Which is why we always recommend spending an extra one to $3,000 on renders and design uh, so you don't have to spend more money on tooling costs down the road. So here is a very large bin that we work with a company called Rollerplast with. 
Um, as you can see, injection molding this from the get-go would be very difficult, um, and the mold for this is very expensive. When you're looking to build a prototype for a product like this, you're looking at different types of plastics, um, and then you're actually going to be building a container like this from maybe 20-ish sheets of plastic that are all carved out, and then that is gonna be welded together to make a, a prototype. So at Plascon Plastics, we actually only work with um, larger companies, perhaps doing brand extensions, line extensions. So we're only gonna be producing any product um, if we can do maybe 100,000 units. Uh, that's almost the minimum uh, when you're looking at injection molding. Sometimes it is possible to get in the tens of thousand units um, if it's a more costly product uh, and, and, and cost of a product, but that is pretty rare. I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about the product development process. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below or contact us at plasticonplastics.com.